everybody Hello. coming in from the rain well this is a great place to be as we talked about in that song you know this is where we remember that there was never a greater love and never a star that shined brighter so here we are for some brightness and we all become the brightness then as we go back out into the world so sing along with us on this one cling to the cross kind of easy for us to sing not to play <laughs>
tough to sing. Where are the hound dogs? So this morning, um, our worship theme is continuing in our Lenten series, God Bond. This morning is New Hope. I hope I can talk. <laughs> so look for the themes of hope and trust as we work through these songs in our worship this morning. Psalm 20. Once again, I am going to be your worship leader to start this morning. Um, our pastor, Jennifer Christ, has succumbed to the flu. So there you go. So she will be in our prayers a little bit later as we go through our worship. So don't be surprised. I think she's on the mend, so this is all good. So good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Trinity, where we are united and empowered to worship, connect, and serve. Um, I'm Debbie Wilson. I'm the director for Contemporary Worship Music. So it's my pleasure to lead you this morning. Pastor Horner is here also. He'll be doing the um, sermon today. 
He's offering the message, uh, God, Bond, New Hope. And, of course, I already mentioned that that's our theme for today. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are several announcements for you. Um, the Discover Trinity uh, class will be held for another round. It was already once on the uh, 11th of February, so if you were there, you know what I'm talking about. But we're going to do that class one more time, and that is next weekend, March 4th. Uh, 10 a.m. in the library, and that's an opportunity to uh, tour the facilities, meet some of the program staff, and discover where you fit in in the journey of faith, whether you're a member or not a member. Um, and then, if you're interested, you find out a little bit there, and you're interested in being a member, there's an opportunity to do that. It's called Begin, and that session is on March 11th. So there are more details and registration information in your Trinity Today. Many things can be found in your Trinity Today. So um, we look forward to that. Today we have with us the Cherub Choir. Those are our littlest musicians at Trinity, so we're happy to welcome them. And they'll be sp singing for um, special music. Um, please note also that we are looking for a special offering to help offset the cost of the day of feeding. And that's an event being held um, through our Lower Susquehanna Synod at the Assembly. That will be June 2nd, and they're doing a food packing thing. So our donations are going to help... Um, offset the cost of that. And then um, stay tuned for more information about how you can volunteer to actually do hands-on packing of food. And I think that goes to the Caribbean where hurricanes have devastated so much. Um, we have had a death in our church family, and that was Lois Costello. She died on February 19th, and she was the mother of Amy Sewer and Margaret Plank. Services will be held on March 24th, so please keep that family in your prayers. Uh, also then, we invite everybody who's baptized to receive Holy Communion, and you come up the center aisle, dip the bread in the cup, and return by these side aisles. And there's gluten-free wafers available to you if you have a gluten intolerance. Just mention that to the person giving the bread. So finally, please let us know that you're here today by filling out the information in the red worship booklets, or those uh, notebooks are at the end of each row, and that gives you the opportunity to pass it to your neighbor and say good morning. So please stand as we prepare our hearts for worship. <clears throat> During the season of Lent, we are called to return to the Lord with all our heart. Let us confess our sin and seek reconciliation with God and neighbor. Merciful God, you sent Jesus Christ to save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We fail in love, neglect justice, and ignore your truth. Have mercy on us and wash away our sin. Create in us clean hearts for the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Since today is the second Sunday in Lent, today's reading is from the 17th chapter of the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. Now I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the answer ancestor of a multitude of nations, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. 
I will bless her, and moreover, I will give, her, give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The children are invited to come up for a story. The name of my story this morning is the Lenten Project Box, and that's what this is, the Lenten Project Box. And this is the Sunday school teacher with her Sunday school class, and she has started a special project for Lent. And Lent are those 40 days right before Easter when we especially work hard to be intentional about serving God. And here is a display board. And so the Sunday school teacher, just pretend I'm the Sunday school teacher, has this blue rectangle here. And then she put these black sticks here. And what does that make? A cross, yes. And then she put these white pieces of fabric on here. Yeah. There. Not sure what it's going to be in the end, but that's what it is for now. And then she asked each of the students to take one of these green pieces of paper in her class. And I'm going to give them to you later. And she said, <clears throat> think of something kind that you have done this past week and write it or draw it on the paper. And right away, Elizabeth raised her hand, and she said, on Tuesday when Mommy had band practice and Daddy had a meeting, and Aunt Gertrude was putting the twins to bed, and they were really fussing and crying, and I read their favorite book to them while Aunt Gertrude cleaned up their high chairs in the kit floor. That was a kind deed, said the Sunday school teacher. Here, you can write your name on the top of the paper, and the Sunday school teacher helped, and and Elizabeth did. And it says, Elizabeth, and it says, I helped my Aunt G, because she doesn't know how to spell Gertrude. Yes. So she put it right there. And then uh, Barabbas raised his hand, and he said, one time when it was just me and Francis at the supper table, and it was really quiet, no one was talking, and I decided to make conversation with him, so I asked him a question about how his job as the operator as the operator of the extraordinary gargantuan, indefatigable, unruly dishwasher patent pending, how that was going. And he said, and Francis said, fine. He doesn't talk much, said Barabbas. But that was a nice thing of Barabbas to do. So he wrote that on his paper. And, and he wrote Barabbas, and he said, I talked to Francis. So they put their green papers in the box here. Yes. So now I'm going to ask you to see if you can think of something kind that you have done for somebody in the last week. And then when you get back to your seats, you can ask a grown-up if you want help to help you write your name on there. Many of you know how to do that. And sure. And, uh, and then you can draw a picture or write the words of something kind that you have done. And we'll place it in the box here with the others. And you can either bring it up at communion time or you can put it in after church is over. And just stick it in the box. And we're going to do this again next week, too. Yes. So before I give you the green papers, let's close with a prayer. You can bow your heads and and put your hands together. Dear God in heaven, all of us know we should be kind and helpful. Please remind us during this Lenten season to work at the very kind and helpful actions that you want us to do. Amen. Thank you.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this quite openly. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on, not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and to forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words and this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. A teacher who was in her final year preparing for retirement was reflecting on the experience that she had of 40 plus years as a teacher. She especially began to reflect on all of the excuses that the kids had come up with over those 40 plus years. And she decided as she came to the second half of the year to do something about it. So she said to her students, I want you to write on a piece of paper all of the things that you can't do. So the kids were busy writing on their little pieces of paper. Some of them said, I can't learn mathematics. I can't throw a baseball. I can't like little Jimmy Smith, he's obnoxious. <laughs> and then she had them gather up those pieces of paper and put them in a little shoe box. And she put the lid on it and she said, kids, I want you to follow me. And they went outside to a place where she had dug a hole and she placed the box in the hole and then took a little spade she had set out and began to put dirt on top of the box. And she said, kids, we're going to do a funeral, for I can't. And this is what she said to them. Dear friends, we are gathered together in this place to honor the memory of I can't. While he was with us on earth, he touched the lives of everyone, some more than others. Unfortunately, his name has been spoken in every public building, schools and city halls and state capitals, and yes, even the White House. We have provided, I can't, with a final resting place and a headstone that contains his epitaph. He is survived by his brothers and sisters, I can I will, and I'm going to right away. They're not as well known as their famous relative and are certainly not as strong and powerful yet. Perhaps someday, with your help, they will make an even bigger mark on the world. May I can't rest in peace and may everyone present pick up their lives and move forward in his absence. Amen. What happened in that second half of the school year was amazing. The children were more focused than they had ever been in the 40 plus years that she had taught. You see, they had given up on I can't. They had buried it in the schoolyard. And now they were able to focus on all of the promises of all of the opportunities. And they faced the year with a lot more optimism than they had in the past. Imagine if the I can'ts were buried in your life. The story that we heard about Abraham and Sarah 
is a really beautiful story. God had come to Abram and said to him, I want you to move from this place that you know to this place that is far away. And so he left that city, that city from 4,000 years ago that was actually pretty cosmopolitan, the city of Ur, and had him move to this promised land that God had given him. He took the I can't, instead said, I will. And when he was old, along with his wife, and past childbearing time, God once again came to him and promised that he was going to be the father of many nations. This was a promise of new hope. And he replaced, I can't, with God will. Now, the word that is used for God in this particular passage from Genesis is El Shaddai. It literally means God of the mountains or God Almighty. And this story in Genesis is the first time that this word is used to describe God. And Genesis, as a book, is where it's used the most often. El Shaddai evokes the idea that God is able to make anything possible. And in the case of Abraham and Sarah, the barren is going to become fertile as they fulfill God's promises. Abraham, of course, had no reason to hope. He was living in a faraway land. The, the, uh, the land itself was not particularly helpful. It was pretty much wilderness. He had no children no family, no future, no legacy to hand down from generation to generation. And yet God makes a covenant with him, a bond between Abraham and Sarah. Now, this covenant is important to realize that is made, that God decides to make with just normal people. Abraham and Sarah weren't politically connected. They weren't the rich and famous. They were just average people. And yet God makes his covenant with normal people like you and me. This covenant is also initiated by God. Abraham doesn't ask for it. Abraham doesn't deserve it. God freely offers and gives it to him. And the hope that Abraham has doesn't come from within himself. It doesn't well up in him. Instead, it comes to him as a gift from God, as he trusts not himself, but trusts God to fulfill his promises. And Abraham and Sarah responded by living a day, every single day, day by day, hour by hour, looking to God. And they were assured that God was with them. This is nothing less, brothers and sisters, than a life of faith, of a hoping against hope, believing. And Abraham and Sarah believed that they would become the ancestors of many nations. In spite of all the difficulties that they faced, being blessed by God would be a generational blessing. Their blessing would result in them being able to bless God others. Author, writer Fulgram said this, hope always triumphs over experience. That is the essence of the power of the cross. Jesus' ministry, his purpose was to live a life and to teach us the ways of God, to give us hope when we are feeling hopeless to comfort us when we're mourning, to give freedom to all of us who are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. He gave his life on the cross for the sake of the world. Even his closest disciples had trouble figuring out what that meant. Peter came to him and said, Jesus, you can't. But Jesus responded that God will. 
Jesus' will through his life, death, and resurrection by doing the will of his Father God in heaven. That is the power of faith. It's not following the rules or doing what's expected. It's about doing what goes beyond the extravagant, the extraordinary, the living a life of significance. Martin Luther said that faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace, so sure and certain that a man could stake his life on it a thousand times. Jesus gave his life in a covenant of hope to you and to me. And God has blessed this congregation. He's encouraged us in faithfulness and witness and service. He inspired our members to give of their time and their talents and their treasures for Christ's mission and ministry. He's called us to trust God and each other. He's asked us to hope in the promises of El Shaddai, the Almighty One. And He wants us to serve, caring for neighbor and for the world. It's never too late to give your life to hope. Abraham and Sarah were well beyond their years. And when God first came to them with the promise that they would be ancestors of many peoples, it took another 24 years for the promise of children to be fulfilled. Sometimes waiting and hope are linked together. But you and I can trust El Shaddai, God Almighty, to bring us a new hope through the new covenant given by Jesus and his cross. And may we live in the words of one of our hymns, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do our Savior's bidding. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow you where you guide. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please rise and let's join together as we proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Renewed in the promises of baptism, let us pray for the church the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church that we might boldly proclaim your love to all those around us, O God. Give us courage to proclaim that love not only in our words, but in our actions as well, that we would carry the cross that confronts us each day as we follow Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation that we might heal from the pain and sorrow of too much death, that we might honor our common humanity within diversity, that we would learn how to not only turn enemies into friends, but be willing to change our own hearts when shown that our hatred, fear, or misunderstanding hurt others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who struggle, those who hurt in heart, body, mind, or soul, We lift up all those who have no home, no employment, no friends or family. We ache with all those who are ill as we remember today Alice Rao, John Shannon, Ashlyn Brzeziak, Jean Dell, Ira Evans, Chris Erdman, Krista Fauber, Jennifer Christ, and all those that we name in our hearts or on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for all those who are gathered here in this space of worship. We ask that you would bless our ministries of fellowship and hospitality. Help us to reach out to those who are preparing for baptism or confirmation. We ask that you would be with us all, whether we are here in this place now, Lord, or elsewhere. We lift before you our Trinity sisters and brothers, Marion Semoff, Virginia Sell, Chris, Karen, and Jackson Sievard, Lori and Teresa Seip, Ellis Seip, Diane Siebert, June Seeds, and Marla Seacrest Peters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving Lois Costello and all those who have gone before us in faith. Bring them to the fullness of their inheritance in Christ and into the joy of eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your covenant mercy, O God, we lift our prayers to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's greet one another. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and and offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is here. The Spirit is with us. With joy, we lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord of life. Holy God, our living water and merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praised you for Christ, our rock and water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders, ashamed body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Compare God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth, 
and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, we will. <laughs> 